Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech and today's video guys we're going to bring a new part 2 of the how to build a gaming system. So this is a mini ITX system, you know, for gaming and editing. I'm going to be using it for editing and yeah, just as a kind of a portable PC. Yeah, just like text my dad's and all stuff like that essentially. Yeah, it's just, it's just portable so I actually fit it in one of the uh, large carrying bags that I have. And um, yeah, that is kind of the main reason I did build this event, you know, let you guys know. Anyhow, you've tuned into part two. Yeah, I'm going to be showing you how to finish the build and install the OS, drivers, and just a few select pieces of software, as I said at the end of part one. And now, let's jump into it. So left to build off, we've installed the 24 motherboard power and the 8-pin CPU power connectors onto the motherboard. Now the next thing to do is actually to install the power supply and screw this into place. In this case, you'll start the power supply in the top of the case, uh, yeah, actually facing upwards. And yeah, once you've actually slotted this in, you want to yeah put in the four screws that came with it. I'd always recommend screwing the screws in diagonally, and this will allow you to get yeah the alignment correct the first time. It's not worse than you know putting in screws and having to take them out again. Now once that's connected, the next thing we're going to be doing is to connect up two of the fans that came with the case. But first, we need two cables from the power supply box, as this is a modular power supply, and all the cables aren't actually you know directly connected um, from the get-go. Now, as you can see in the footage, you'll want to grab the power cable with a load of four-pin Molexes on, and you also want to grab a cable with a load of SATA connectors, so we can connect the hard drive that we installed from part one. Now, once you've got the cables installed, take two of the Molexes and uh, yeah, power both the fans by plugging these in. In most cases, uh, yeah, case fans are actually Molex these days, but some are three or four pin connectors that actually plug directly into the motherboard itself. This is good for stuff, uh, say like um, yeah, if, if you want to control the fans, uh, yeah, fan speeds. Now once you're connected to fans, the next thing to do is to install the power cable to the hard drive. Do this by grabbing a SATA connector and actually yeah, um, yeah from the uh, power cable that we connected into the um, power supply and yeah you want to be plugging this into the hard drive and once you've done this the hard drive will now spin up once it's got power and yeah you'll be able to actually you know install your os and you know have your games and all that kind of jazz however i will say uh yeah you want to connect uh, both the cables now to the power supply so yeah this is the uh, sada power cable and also the mullox uh cable uh, which, yeah, as I said at the beginning, this is a modular power supply, so not all the cables connected to the power supply from the get go. Now, one thing to remember, and yeah, one thing I will actually recommend you guys do is just to do a little bit of cable management around about now. And I will say that, yeah, the best thing to do is just to, you know, just to bundle all the cables together. This will allow two things better airflow and, yeah, we'll uh, make sure no cables get stuck in your cooling fans. Bending your PC, uh, yeah, bending your PC down, guys, is not cool. You know what I did there? Not cool. It's on fire. It's hot. Yeah, whatever. Anyhow, uh, moving swiftly on, the last thing to do is to install the GPU. However, due to I am currently in my house, I'm going to be connecting a dual band wireless adapter first. So don't worry if this doesn't look like a GPU to guys. What I'm actually going to be doing is installing the drivers. And at the end of the video, I'm actually going to be then showing you how to yeah, actually connect up the graphic card and how to wire yeah, this up with the power cable and all that kind of jazz. And yeah, I will say, like all expansion cards, once you've inserted the cards, you want to screw this into the back of the case. Typically, I will say, graphic cards have two screws because they are dual width. And yeah, you know, be using one screw for something like a wire Wi-Fi card or a sound card like in this case. Now once you're done, slide the side panels on or up or whatever you need to do in your case and attach a mouse, keyboard, monitor and also a, yeah, um, a power cable to the power supply and yeah, connect this to the wall. Once you've done this, press that trusty power button. Now if you followed this guide to a T, you should have something on your screen. Now when you see the splash screen text and uh, yeah, you've actually got stuff on your screen, press the delete key or F2 when your PC is booting up and this will take you into the BIOS. Now in my case and in a lot of your guys cases, I would actually recommend you to actually set your CPU fan profile to silent and yeah, take it off normal and put it on silent mode. That will bring down yeah, the audible noise which is pretty damn good. Also, um, yeah, it'll be a good thing to let your BIOS know what the speed of your RAM is, or I might just set it to 1333 MHz. This is a common thing that which motherboards do. Now, once you've done this, press on Save Changes and Reset, and yeah, this will exit the BIOS screen. And once it's done this, the PC will restart. And yeah, what I want to do then is actually insert a Windows 8.1 disk or a flash drive with Windows 8.1 uh, ISO image bends onto this, like I'm doing in this case. Now, typically, I will say installing Windows from a flash drive is faster and more ideal, as to be honest, you can repair your PC if anything goes wrong by just grabbing your flash drive on your keys don't know about you but i always yeah i always keep flash drives on my keys and it's a lot better than hunting down a portable dvd drive and also the windows disc wherever the hell that may be in your room 
Now onto the installation of the OS, Windows has forever got simple to install and that means there's an even smaller chance of any of you guys going wrong. Now if you are a first time builder I will say that installing off a flash drive it might be a little bit tricky setting up the actual flash drive but once you've done this and followed say a simple guide on the internet it is, uh, it, it is worth it. Now once the interface loads you'll be prompted to select your language, time and currency format and also to set your keyboard input method. Once you've done this, uh, yeah, you just click that good old next button. Now once you've done this, press install in the middle of the screen and on this menu, you may or may not have to input your product key for Windows. Type this in and click the good old next button yet again. Now if this doesn't pop up, I will say that you will get a pop up in Windows once it's finished installing and yeah, it will ask you then to enter a product key and yeah, you'll have something like 3 days, it might be 3 days, 5 days, 7 days, just depends how Windows is feeling. Now on the next screen, since this is a brand new PC, you'll want to click on custom installation at the bottom. Now don't let this scare you, but I will say that once you press this, what you want to do then is select the drive where you want to install your operating system and click format. I will say you might have hard drives from previous com um, computers in the build with, you know, a load of your Steam games on, or, you know, you might have, uh, you know, chose to go with an SSD and have multiple hard drives. Uh, uh, yeah, hard drives, but in this case, you just want to be clicking on the main drive where you're going to be installing your OS. That's the only drive that you need to format. Now, once you've formatted the drive, you can then click on the new partition at the right of the screen. And once you've done this, uh, yeah, Windows will actually create a 100 megabyte system partition. And once you've done this, um, yeah, just click back on the primary partition and click the next button and that'll be it windows will be installing i will say that the best thing for you guys to do is just to go make a cup of hot chocolate or grab a beer to pass the time as i will say this will take between about 5 to 30 minutes depending on the speed of your solid state drive or your hard drive once you've loaded into Windows for the first time, the first place that you'll want to go is the device manager to look up at the current state of the drivers and yeah, just to see if Windows has done a good job in installing the drivers for you. Now as you can see, there are a lot of pieces of hardware installed that are not actually working to their best and I will say, Windows won't be 100% sure what they are. Now, there's a lot of graphic cards that you can put in PCs, you know, there's a lot of Wi-Fi adapters, sound cards, all this stuff and what you've got to do now is actually hunt down the drivers and install these manually and the drivers essentially guys just a small piece of software which tells your PC how to communicate with the device and if it knows how to communicate well let's just say that device is going to be working pretty damn good. Now depending on what motherboard you've used and yeah what type of chipset your motherboard has there might be a lot of stuff that you need to install and yeah in some cases there might be just two or three things that you'll have to install but it is good to get these installed so your system is running at its 100% best. Now the best place to start is to go to the manufacturer's website and get and yeah actually navigate to the downloads page for your motherboard. So type the make and model uh, of your motherboard into Google and you should be able to find um, yeah, the uh, manufacturer's website and you know, the download section relatively easy. And once you're there, download all the drivers you believe you need and I would actually recommend downloading them all. And I will say the ones that fail, uh, that's fine. It just means that they are not supported on your system, which is yeah, completely fine. Manufacturers like Gigabyte, MSI, ASUS, they all compress their drivers, so what you want to do is uncompress these. Now once you've done this, install all the drivers the same way you would install pieces of software like Google Chrome and CCleaner for example. Some pieces of software you will need to uh, yeah, actually install uh, you know, after you've done certain pieces, so yeah, just do bear that in mind. Now once you're done with the drivers, and yeah, I will say installing drivers is just a process of spamming the next button and the finish button. As you can see on screen, that's all I'm doing, just whizzing it past there really quickly. But yeah, you just install the pieces of software, it's really simple. Now once you've done this, you want to restart your PC and check the device manager again, which should look really clean and yeah, it shouldn't show no warnings and say that you know you need to install drivers for select pieces of hardware. And it should look something like what mine does on the screen right now. Moving on, talking about Google Chrome, this is something that you would want to install immediately and yeah, just to get rid of using uh, Internet Explorer. Now, I would recommend going over to 98.com and selecting a lot of programs that you want to install. Some of my favourites include Google Chrome, WinRAR, ImageBurn, Aslogix Disk Defrag, VLC Media Player, OpenOffice, AVG and Classic Start as Windows 8.1 somehow, yeah, Microsoft forgot to put the Start menu in the version of Windows. Now don't worry, I will say that, yeah, by installing Classic Start you will actually get the start menu back which was in Windows 7 and I will say the Windows 7 start menu was pretty nice. Now just a bit on 9.8 this program essentially downloads and installs all the programs automatically with yeah no silly toolbars, bloatware or viruses. I really recommend this and I will say the real yeah, the main reason that I would recommend this is because it actually installs and downloads them at the same time and gets them running on your system as fast as possible. There's no need to click next and yeah, you just download a little um, yeah, little exe and it'll just install them all as you can see on the screen. It's whizzing through them really, really fast. I will say it is sped up but it just whizzes 
cruises through them and it just installs the software without you having to click that next button about 5,000 times, which I will say is pretty damn awesome. And once you've done this, I would recommend another restart your PC and then to get cracking with the thousand or so Windows updates you'll have. Now remember, you have a new PC which has had no updates, which has had yeah no updates installed. So if you have hundreds of them, well that kind of makes a lot of sense. And once you've done this, yeah, feel free to go to Steam and also Origin and get downloading them games. I will say, yeah, feel free to download any other pieces of software and uh, yeah, maybe change your, your background and your resolution. There we are. Also, I will say, I'm not going to include this in the video, I will say you will need to install the NVIDIA drivers if you've got an NVIDIA graphic card or the AMD drivers if you have an AMD GPU. I'm pretty sure if you guys bought either of these cards, you will know what manufacturer actually made your card. But yeah, head over to their website and install the graphics driver. So guys, that's it. That's how to build a PC. If you guys have been able to build a PC with this video, I will say cheers for watching, tuning in, and yeah, kind of educating yourself via my content. That's really, really good. Now, if you guys have built a PC, congratulations. Get playing them games. Now, if you guys have had any, you know, troubles, or you, you know, you have some questions or some comments, please feel free to put them in the in the comment section. And yeah, if you do have some suggestions for me in terms of uh, yeah future build videos, yeah, please do let me know. But also, guys, you guys are you know come. You know, kind of the regulars. I will say that in a few weeks, I'll be posting a full series of videos, which yeah, show you guys what specs to use at different price points. So you know, 300 pound bill, 400 pound bill, founded, and that'll go all the way up to 1,500 pounds. And yeah, that'll be essentially me, yeah, talking to you guys in terms of what specs, uh, and, and yeah, just essentially what computer hardware you should get at given price points. So I don't know people tend to mix a you know really strange CPUs and GPUs together, and yeah, building a balanced gaming system is something that you should do. You know, you should never have a gaming system where it's CPU or or GPU heavy, you know, that's how you create bottlenecks. Anyway, guys, I will say, uh, yeah, if you do want to pick up any of the parts that I used in this build, feel free, uh, yeah, feel free to look in the description. I'll have a full kind of part list there, and yeah, that'll take you to Amazon. Now, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, yeah, as I said, comments in the comment section if you have any of them. And yeah, apart from that, guys, thank you very much for watching, and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.